Well, who better now to talk to, to help us navigate all of these troubled waters than Terry Milewski, a journalist who's also one of the top experts on this entire question of the global Khalistani militant extremist terrorist uh, uh, organization, nexus, grouping, call it what you will. He's the author of Blood for Blood, 50 years of the global Khalistan project. Uh, Terry, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. You know, what do you make of this fresh indictments that the Americans have come out with and the reports that are coming out of the United States right now? especially given the diplomatic ruckus that has been taking place between India and Canada? Well, I think it, it's got to give pause to all of those who say, aha, and a, a lot of Indians did say this, did they not, that uh, Trudeau is blowing smoke, he doesn't have any evidence, uh, a, a, and he's made a fool of himself. Uh, well, apparently not. Apparently, although he, uh, I still think he's at fault for not producing evidence, uh, that, that was absurd. It was always absurd that he would not produce his evidence publicly, uh, as the Americans have now done, but the Americans have now done it for him. And it turns out uh, that uh, the alleged plot uh, is the same plot by the same group, the same Indian group connected, the FBI says, to the Indian government, the same group which was plotting against Panoon was the same uh, bunch that was plotting against Mr. Nidja, who was killed famously in Surrey, British Columbia, June 18th. So I think uh, this makes the Indian claims that uh, Trudeau's charges were absurd, it makes them kind of absurd. But Terry, of course, to be fair, it has to be said that this is just an indictment right now. It has to be proved. It has to go to trial. It has to be known what exactly happened. It has to be known what level the involvement was at, whether it was sanctioned at the high level, was it not sanctioned, what, did it happen at all? All of those questions still have to come out, and it will only come out as investigations proceed and as the trial happens. But coming back to that point about deafness and politeness and the way this was actually handled, does this perhaps explain why India reacted in such a strong and hostile manner to, to Canada but when it comes to the United States, India said, OK, we're going to look into this. We're setting up a high-level committee. Yes, it does, because the Canadians left the, the Indians no way out. I mean, they directly accused, the, basically accused the prime minister uh, of uh, involvement in murder. Uh, but the, the Americans didn't do that. They've left them a way out. And that's why the, different is so, the, the, the reaction is so dramatically different. Now the Indians are saying, Oh, of course, we'll take a look at this very seriously. And we're, we're impaneling a high-level committee and what have you. And, of course, you can see a way out at the end of the road where there might be, in the end, a, a trial of some poor fellow who's been thrown under the bus, and he will uh, you know, serve a light sentence and then quietly be released and given a gold watch for his retirement. And it'll all, it'll all be settled in, in a diplomatic way. But right. uh, the Canadians didn't leave room for that, did they? They said, <laughs> no, you, you, the government is guilty. That's why the different reaction. Well, one question that's clearly been exercising a lot of people in India and for a period of time, look, whether or not there's evidence, whether or not there's a plot, whether or not there was actually an assassination, I think the overwhelming reaction in India has also been that if there is a plot to go and assassinate somebody like Panun, at the end of the day, even if you assume that worst case scenario that it was actually done, there are people who will be saying that why is this philosophically, ethically, morally, legally any different to countries in the West doing it? Why is it any different from America killing Soleimani? Or why is it different from people being killed in drone strikes in Afghanistan or Pakistan or for that matter, Osama bin Laden being killed inside Pakistan. You could argue that if somebody is a terrorist and somebody is inciting violence and there is no action taken against that person under the rule of law, then do you therefore invite extrajudicial action? And is extrajudicial action justified in that case? And does that principle then have to be applied globally? That's a particular viewpoint that you're hearing a lot of in India now. Well, we hear this argument a lot, and we're going to hear it a lot more now, aren't we? That everybody does it, and uh, who's who's going to shed tears if the government goes out and kills terrorists? Uh, the millions of Indians feel the same way. In the fact, they're probably because if they find out that Modi was indeed involved in such an assassination plot aiming at terrorists, 
then uh, millions of Indians will, will will turn out and vote for him, won't they? And he'll win the next uh, the election next year in a landslide. Uh, at the same time, uh, there's a problem with this whole argument that look, it's okay because they're terrorists. And the answer is, are Indian voters interested in voting for a world in which the guy at the top decides? without any due process of law, who's guilty, who shall live and who shall die, and send out assassins in friendly countries, in democratic and countries, with the rule of law to rub people out. Well, you know, yes and no, but looking at that entire talk of rule of law, how is it a fair world or how is the rule of law applying? If And as you know this, you've done so much work on this, India has been asking for a long period of time to take action against the Khalistani terrorists. Those concerns have been ignored for 30 to 40 years. You've written about it. You know how the ignoring of those concerns led to the blowing up of that Air India plane in the 1980s. No action had been taken against those people then. No action is being taken against people like Panun right now. So in that sort of a situation where you're expressing concerns and no reaction is being taken, the practical course that countries in the West, like America, have taken in the past is to feel entitled to go and take out of that ter those terrorists. But at the same time, they are saying that if somebody else does it, then it's wrong. That's the double standard that many people are questioning. Perfectly fair question. Uh, and uh, th there is hypocrisy enough to go around, is there not? Uh, it's uh, why is it okay when the West does it and it's not okay when India does it? Many Indians feel that way, and I think they have a, a, a fair point. Uh, the, 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 there is a distinction, though, uh, you can regard it as important or not if you like, between a country which has the rule of law, where if you present evidence that it persuades, for example, a Canadian court that you should extradite this gentleman because he's got a record as long as you're armed, because we have solid evidence that he was involved in this or that and a situation where you cannot, where you don't have the rule of law. And, you know, for example, the Pakistanis were not going to give up Osama bin Laden for trial in the West, were they? Uh, so uh, your options are limited in a situation where you don't have rule of law. In rule of law, friendly countries know it's not done to send assassins from my country into your country to wipe out my critics. So taking what you said forward, would you think that it is fair to say that while obviously investigations into this so-called plot should continue and it, there will be an indictment and there'll be a trial in America and Indian government has said, uh, you know, we, we're going to be looking into this, this as well. But at the same time, for the rule of law to work, do you think some judicial action should be taken against Panun? Um, there is evidence. In fact, you don't even need too much evidence. You have video recordings of this man looking at a camera and saying that people who fly Air India are not going to be safe. He's putting up posters uh, calling for, for uh, making threats against Indian diplomats. So if action is taken against him, then there is some justice. And then there is a fair case to say, look, the rule of law is applying in places like Canada or the US. And therefore, it's absolutely wrong to be coming in and assassinating them because the rule of law is actually applying. But, and so Canada is certainly guilty in the past of taking this far too lightly and not acting uh, on requests, for example, for the extradition of Talvinder Palmer, the Air India bomber, where, where, where Pierre Elliott Trudeau, Justin Trudeau's father, famously said in 82, no, we're not going to extradite him for the murder of two Thank policemen you. in Punjab. All right. Terry Millius gave one of the top experts on what's been happening with Khalasani terror groups across the, across the world. Thank you so much for joining us with that very, very valuable perspective. Thank you for being with us.